In this video, we'll discuss batch macros and batch macro creation inside of the Altrix platform. A batch macro is a special kind of macro that is typically required to process a group of records based on a control parameter. For each control parameter, the macro logic will be reconfigured and run from beginning to end. In this session, you'll learn how to construct a batch macro in order to execute a process repeatedly until all records or groups of records process through the macro. Now, in order to illustrate the construction of a batch macro, I'm going to enter into the Altrix Designer, and through the properties of the configuration for the overarching module, we'll dynamically toggle the type from a module to become a macro. From the drop-down list, I can select this to become a batch macro, and I can begin that construction. In order to build out this batch macro, all we're going to do is enter into our interface tools. Through the interface tools, I can choose to click and drag onto the canvas a macro input tool. The macro input tool is going to allow me to define what type of data is going to be able to flow into the application or tool for processing. In this case, through a text input, I can actually construct a placeholder or a series of numbers in order to be multiplied by a variant number of control parameters. Okay, so in this case, I'm just going to assign some random numbers. We can say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and move this forward. Through the input here, we can give it a name, we can call it input, and then we can give the connector an abbreviation, in this case, the letter I. We want to show a field map because we want the end user to specify which field in their source data is numeric in nature and what we would like to assign a multiplier to. Okay? The great thing about creating a batch macro is that it constructs an additional connector for the number of batches that can be fed through this process. So the number of controls really dictates how many times this process that we're about to construct will run. The process that we're going to run is fairly simplistic. We're going to enter into our data preparation tools. We'll click and drag onto the Canvas formula tool. We're going to build out a new field called result that is simply going to be our number times a control parameter. In this case, the number is going to be 999. We'll leverage as a placeholder. And then what we'll do is we'll go back into our interface design and place a macro output tool directly on the canvas. We'll call it the result. And the connector abbreviation will be an R. Okay. Now what we can do is we want to be able to specify the sequence of controls that can be applied to a series of batches flowing through this process. In order to do so, <clears throat> I can go back to my interface tool set and I can be exposed to a control parameter. This control parameter becomes our multiplier. <clears throat> the multiplier will be unique per a set of records flowing through the transaction. In this case here, I can take that control parameter and dynamically update my formula tool through an action by isolating or updating the value 999 in that formula. The number 999 will be dynamically replaced for each individual batch that flows through this process. I can then go ahead and save this out as a simple batch macro and we can move forward. In order to illustrate how to leverage a batch macro directly inside of a, an Altrix workflow, we've gone ahead and opened up a brand new module. The brand new module is going to contain two sources of information. One is a set of unique stores with a multiplier and one source is going to be a series of transactions made by uh, a series of customers in the Denver, Colorado area with a total sales volume appended. Okay. This total sales volume or this total sales number is going to be leveraged in the multiplication of the underlying formula tool. We're going to take this field of information and multiply it by each of the multipliers for each unique store. Each unique store is going to designate and delineate the number of batches that we're going to run. So in this case, I see 10 stores enumerated. That means we're going to run one unique process per store, applying the multiplier to that total sales number contained in my transaction table. In order to set the stage for this analytical process, I'm going to have to go into my data preparation tools and click and drag onto the canvas, the select tool, downstream from my total transaction by customer file. The reason why I need to do this is because I need to dynamically transform this total sales uh, value into a number or a double. At this point, I can right click onto the working canvas and insert that newly constructed batch macro. 
When I open up the batch macro, I can notice immediately a, a, a tool or an input connector with an upside down question mark. That connection specifically designates where or how we're going to define that batch. So that means I'm going to take my unique set of stores and stream it directly into that upside down question mark. In, in conjunction with that, we'll also stream our transaction data directly into the input and configure the batch macro tool. In this case, we have to establish a group by designating which store number matches which store number. So basically, this is going to define the number of batches, again, based off of the number of stores that we see here. That group by is, is basically telling the underlying process to run that process on a store by store basis. And then to apply that multiplier, we can enter into the questions tab where we're exposed to that control where we have to also designate the number that we're going to multiply everything by, and we have to specify that multiplier field. The results of this becomes fairly simple. In order to illustrate this and show this simply, we're going to click and drag onto the Canvas to select tool. And what we'll do is we'll just simply show the store number, the number which correlates to the sales volume, and the result. We'll then go ahead and browse to these results and process the module. The first thing that I'm going to point out is the output log. We're going to notice that the batch macro ran through 10 different iterations. Again, that's one iteration per store. You'll also notice through the results that for store 100, the number or the sales volume is identical to the result. That's simply because the multiplier used for store 100 is 1. 1 times the number is the number. If I scroll down in my results to store 101, we should see those values being doubled. Here we are for store number 101. If you notice record number 409, 22.1 is now 44.2. It's doubled. So we can validate and verify that this batch process is running effectively. Again, the batch macro was running the underlying macro process for each set of records or unique batches that we identified with its associated multiplier. This concludes our session on batch macros. Thank you.